Hey guys, I'm here with Jeff Lewis from uh, Comcast. Um, he's the VP of data products over there, and we're here to talk about SD-WAN. You know what, Jeff, SD-WAN, if, if there's one thing that our partners ask us the most about, sure. it's probably SD-WAN, yeah. right? Um, and you guys are doing some pretty unique stuff about it. Can mm -hmm. you show me a little bit on this whiteboard about what you guys are doing, how you're doing it, and how you're approaching it? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, it's a pleasure to be here, and I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, just so that you guys are aware, Comcast recognized the need to enter this space, essentially a layer three VPN space for what we characterize as mid-market and enterprise customers, the middle and the larger of the large customers. Uh, we didn't have that in our portfolio. Um, and so we looked really, really hard roughly about two years ago at what our network could deliver, and we had two choices, or at least we thought there were two choices. The first was, go extend our MPLS core, which every major network in the world has an MPLS core, and extend that to the edge. We would have been the last provider in the market. It would have been an interesting play, but it really wasn't exactly the smartest move to make. Okay. Then we looked at SD-WAN, right? Software-defined, wide area networking. You seem to make a lot of sense. However, what I'm gonna show you here today is our approach. Okay. What we did was we looked really, really hard at, do we wanna be a one-trick pony? That's sort of an internal nickname joke for us, okay. or do we want to build an extensible platform such that virtually every product and service Comcast delivers over time can be delivered through this same platform. Okay. Does it make sense? So this is so a basis for this, what you, what's to come. Absolutely. So while SD-WAN is the first product that we deliver, and it actually is the combination of three virtualized services, virtual firewall, virtual router, and then the virtualized VPN, so we virtualize three different things to deliver okay. this product the entire structure of the platform is with an eye or an ear towards the next and the next and the next service. And I'll lay that out for you so you guys can see it. So you have three virtual machines running today, yep. and in the future, whatever next thing that you Precisely. think is the next, you're going to be able to just drop that right yep. in there. And, and I've got I'm, software defined. It's funny, because I hear all the time, exactly. everybody, the term SD-WAN, yep. it started out in SDN, software defined network, right. and, and the virtualization is the key to it. But everybody forgets about that exactly. now, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And actually, your term SDN is perfect for this, okay. because because we didn't build an SD-WAN, SD-WAN only platform. It truly is a software-defined network okay. delivering an SD-WAN service. That's the first part of that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So cool. I think the easiest way is to just, I'm going to go block on you, uh, yeah. block, block diagrams here, and I'm going to draw what we announced last September, and hopefully this comes out so everybody can read it. It's a platform that we called ActiveCore. Okay. Okay, and again, remember, as I break this out, not all, but many, many, many products and services will come through this platform. Okay. And what we talked about was, okay, well, what's the important part of an active core infrastructure? The first instance, certainly, and I'll maybe do this, is our BSS OSS platform. We, have a, we happen to be partnering with Amdocs in this space. Lots of different companies do lots of different things. But underneath Amdocs, it's probably somewhere along about 10 to 12 different platforms and systems that touch not only the virtualized service, but also our underlying transport services. Okay. I know a lot of my partners are going to say, what is Amdocs? Oh, Talk well, about that a little perfect. Bit. So Amdocs is the name of a company okay. that specializes in particular on the BSS, the business uh, services platform, okay. where you basically, this whole block is ordered cash and then service assurance. Can never forget my operations partners. There you go. Always got to have a happy customer. Okay. All right. Now, one component is this, which is large, very, very big. Another aspect, and this is the key decision that we made, and I'm going to delineate with respect to my competition why we think we made a wise choice and why we're not so sure we're seeing it from any others. Underneath this, and you know, this is just figurative, it doesn't come priority one over the other. This is our orchestration layer. Okay. This is critical. If you don't orchestrate, and forgive the sloppy writing, if you don't orchestrate your VNFs smartly, Okay. You will never deliver more than one. Now, in a hardware model, right, and there's lots of players in the hardware space, I'll, I'll try not to say their names, a customer would purchase the piece of hardware, deploy it on their premise, mm -hmm. and then they would deploy their CPE around and they would experience the service, and it's fine. They would operate the service and on you go. Or perhaps you or your partners would man manage it for the customer. There's other quasi-cloud offerings from these types of players. Yep. But the reality is it's a single-threaded SD-WAN solution. Yep. And then they say, well, I'm going to give you firewall, or I'm going to give you advanced firewall, or I'm going to give you wide, uh, uh, WAN acceleration, or I'm going to do the next and the next and the next. 
and it's, op it's almost like open heart surgery in terms of the depth of integration between that hard hardwired platform and whatever that extra thing is. And a lot of times these are two different devices Precisely. that they're, they're, they're delivering and not Pre one unified device. Bingo, right? and yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna hammer that in a second. The next piece that's critical in our architecture is, and again, forgive my poor writing, is a VNF manager. Okay. And what that does is service chaining. So when I draw down here the universal CPE, that's where the virtual services run, okay. all right? Uh, and you'll see the interaction in a second. Um, if you don't service chain well, then the applications are gonna stomp on each other down at the customer's premise and the user experience will be terrible. Okay. All right, so these three components, and then I'm gonna draw in a different color. I'm gonna draw it in Comcast Business Blue. This is something that we made a huge bet on. DX, digital experience. So if you think about how a customer or a managed service provider, however that relationship is, is created on behalf of the customer, everything is about that single pane of glass. Mm -hmm. How do I interact with the product? Well, if I'm gonna interact with multiple products and services, which I'll draw in a second, I can't have one, two, three, four, 12 different screens in order to experience, manage, and interoperate my services. So one portal one. to be able to take care of everything. One. You know, I have a lot of customers, they're doing all sorts of things, right? Yeah. We have retail customers, and digital experience is such a key term. Totally. And it's, it's the key to success, yep. no matter what you do, I, right? I agree. Uh, the end customer, yep. and for you, the end customer is is really the, you know, the the organization that needs to come in here and be able to manage this stuff, That's right. take care of it. Because right. it's not just you who can take care of this box, right? Not at all, right. not at all. I, I okay. should have mentioned that what I'm about to show you where the services are, are completely over the top, okay. and they're completely manageable by whomever. Okay. Comcast will, the way we designed it originally was I will manage the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You, Mr. Customer, do not need to own anything. Okay. I will place a universal CPE. Our terminology is UCPE. Okay. You may hear terms like virtual CPE. I'll, maybe I'll comment on that in a minute. But we put a physical appliance. It's, a, it's a, almost like a computer, storing compute okay. device on-prem. In fact, I'll draw that, I'll draw that right now That's so good. we have the reference. So this is good old customer location. And I'm just gonna draw a fat, and it's really it's only one RU thick, but I'm gonna draw it fat. Universal CPE. Okay. This is where store and compute occurs. Okay. All right. And I'll explain to you why we do it in this fashion. So this is an over-the-top solution. We can deliver this anywhere in the United States. Any of the products that I talk about can and will be delivered across Keep the United States, there. not within my footprint. All right, which is about 45% of the U.S. We will aggregate uh, broadband and fiber on behalf of the customer. We will manage okay. that. So those aspects of managed. Now, when you say aggregate, mm -hmm. just your stuff, or you no, will no, no, actually no. We'll, bring other and other carriers. We'll bring everybody. Territory. You'll, everybody. you'll actually. Wow. So that's if you powerful. came with a deal that was 60, 60 sites and okay. 35 of them were in our footprint and they were distributed across, I don't know, four different carriers' networks. Maybe there's some cable networks and maybe the more traditional LEC network. We, if that is what the customer wishes, we will manage that. We will aggregate for the customer to get all that. Okay. One throat to choke. All right. However, this, the, the, the active core services sit on top of that. Right. So what that technically means, and while we would love to be the network service provider underneath, yep. technically it means if the customer has an existing network, we'll just overlay right on top of it. That's great. That, that's the flexibility I it wasn't has. expecting to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're here to surprise. Awesome. So what I'm going to do now is, and I'm going to keep coming back to this, and I'm going to draw a word up here. Hopefully it comes out insights. I'm going to come back to insights in just a second. Okay. We have 11 patents filed against us. Okay. So we're actually quite serious about what we're doing on the DX. And like I said, we've submitted 11 so far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the power of this platform. So everybody, I believe, has seen our press announcements. Versa. Yeah. Versa is our partner for SD-WAN. Yeah. Versa also has a role with us up here, but I'm not going to get into the details. I need my really hardcore network partners to be able right. to help with that. This is our controller. Okay. All right. So if you just want to talk about different things, this is the controller. This is deployed in our cloud. This is the same cloud that supports Xfinity uh, TV. You know, okay. it's our it's nationwide. 
This is in what we call a high availability. It's in redundant data centers. So if one data center goes down, we have multiple backups. Okay, okay. so very, very, very resilient platform. Single data center, multiple oh, no, data multiple. centers? Oh no, multiple, multiple. How about geographically across uh, the country? Across the US. Yeah. All across? Yeah, east coast, west coast. Do you have a so. count of how many are there? Um, controllers? I actually don't know how many data centers we have. Right now okay. there are four. Okay. Four redundant deployments. Okay. And as we scale, as we scale, common. we can deploy more. You can either okay. scale up in the location or take it to another data center. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This this platform here, um, I'm not again. I'm not going to mention vendor names for Comcast as a carrier of, or a carrier of services. Right. We're, we're a carrier. Yeah. I'm not a box maker. Yep. I didn't. I didn't write Versa. I would never want to do that. Our responsibility for our customers was multi-tenancy. I needed okay. a partner yeah. where I could go one customer, two customer, thousand customers, ten thousand customers to Something any. Something that can truly scale, Bingo. not have to keep on building out, building Bingo. out, building out. Bingo. Yep. And in our opinion, there were only two vendors. Yep. And if you buy me a beer sometime, I'll tell you who we the other one was. Who, who but we went with Versa, and we think yep. that was a smart move. Okay. As I indicated, and I won't draw it all up here. This inside of here, we virtualized the router, we virtualized the firewall, we virtualized the VPN capability. Okay. Note, many of our competitors do not offer firewall, stateful firewall, as part of the base package solution. That yep. Right? And that's, and we, we thought there was, here. yeah. We're hearing that is yeah. really, at this point in time, a really, really big thing, right? We're finding more and more people who are dropping on yep. third party components to it. Now you have yeah. one that's really all together. Yeah, right? I dropped my eraser, but what that means is you would need another appliance, another yep. box just for a firewall. Yeah. In software world, why in the world would you do that? That makes no sense, or it doesn't make right. sense to us. Not in a SD. Right. Not in an SD, SD, in an SD world. Scenario, so, right? what else are we, I'm sorry. I gotta pause you. Sure. So, go back to the digital experience. Yep. Managing that, are you actually going through this yeah. DX platform for the management? Yeah, right? so that's an awesome question because it's perfect timing. Because that's in a differentiator. The, in the right? case of SD-WAN, and again, we like to, I don't know how well you know Comcast. I don't know how well the audience knows Comcast business, I should say. Right. We're a fairly humble organization. Um, you may not think that with some of the press that you see, but within Comcast business, we're pretty humble. We don't yeah. think that we're the smartest people in the world, but we think awfully hard. In the case of SD-WAN, when we looked at the portal from Versa, with all due respect to Versa, it kind of looked like the inside of an airplane cockpit. Okay. Yeah. Every bell, I'm an old engineer. Engineers writing user user interfaces for <laughs> other fancy, engineers. Right? It's not pretty. It's not fancy. It's sometimes imposing. Yeah. We've run across multiple customers who have buyer's remorse. Okay. They bought the story of efficiency, low cost. I can drive my cost down. I just go over the public internet, and when they take the joystick to drive, it goes nowhere. And they're like, "Oh my gosh, I don't have the right people. Yep. I need more skill." I don't know how to do this, and then all of a sudden they come talking to us or other people well, saying, can you help me. manage this for me? Yep. Not all, yep. there's plenty of customers who can drive it on their own, but the point was, we wanted to make this approachable, and we pulled it in just by pulling every API out of here, and while I won't draw it for you, maybe I'll just draw over here, I'm just gonna draw a simple little thing, network. And network ties to this, Okay. All right. And what we're doing is we're pulling APIs from our network, from all of our BSS, OSS platforms, and in particular from the controllers into the digital experience and presenting that to the customer in the most elegant way we can. Okay. And the way we designed that, guess what we did? We asked customers what they wanted. No, Shocking. why would you do that? Shocking. <laughs> we went to the customer and we literally asked them. We needed an initial point of view. Okay. We needed, like, we, we got to come with something. Yep rapidly, what we're doing up here is what we do in other parts of Comcast. We're very, very agile. We're about, you'll hear me talk later perhaps, we're about to release our next analytics package. It took us two months, spin, 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 go. Spin, 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 go. Okay. Now the trick of that is, you gotta be mindful about how does a customer ingest those advancements. Mm -hmm. But in this case, this is a big enough thing that customers have been pulling for, so we're excited to get it out. Again, as you add different components, you're going to have one universal interface Precisely. into it. And, and we hear that all the time. I, I have customers who say, I don't want to go into three different management platforms Correct. to take care of that So that if you like that, what, what's this? Okay. So our very next virtualized service, um, it's going to come third quarter, fourth quarter. Without getting into the minutia, as soon as we knock the tumbler over the first, what we call third party VNF, Okay. Right. Virtualized network function for those who aren't familiar with the lexicon, VNF is a is a fancy word for the next product. Yep. The next product. Um, 
I, like I, I, I'm an old engineer. I hate techno bullies. It's like just explain what it is. Okay. Our very next one is going to be advanced firewall and UTM, okay. unified threat management. So today, what do we do? Customers want this. Typically, they go to Fortinet. Typically, they go to Palo Alto. They may be riding with Cisco. Okay. You could find Juniper. There's a handful of other players. There's lots of good players in the space. Yeah. What we're looking to do as we start going this way, so I'll, I'll just draw it this way and say third party VNF. Our goal is best of breed all the okay. way across. As customers say, I want this vendor, I need this badge, I am, uh, this player is the most prevalent and I'm familiar with them and I have confidence in them, okay. they're going to be part of our platform. All right, so basically you're going to be able to offer multiple platforms. Yep. The customer says, I want Palo Alto, I yep. want Fortinet, plug that in. Yep. i got to bring you back a little bit. Yep. You said you had firewall in there. Yes. What's the difference between So those? stateful firewall right okay. here, I'll just, just a straight uh, it, it, it's a simple stateful firewall, stateful firewall. Okay. All right. Um, it doesn't go to layer seven. I mean, th this okay. advanced firewall takes you up to layer and seven no, for no Apple. UTM. Where, UTM stands for? Unified, unified Threat Management. Okay. Um, and there's a lot we can talk about here. My yep. colleague on information security is really anxious for us to enable our first partner. We're, okay. we're deep in development on this now. Okay. The stateful firewall, when you look at branch offices and you look at how, how distributed enterprises have changed, in an MPLS world, what did you do? All your traffic routed back through that center hub somewhere, and then you'd hit an internet drain and out you would go. Right. Stateful firewall allows you to just drop that traffic locally. You never have to hairpin it back to the network. So if you're really taking advantage of cloud applications, why in the world are you riding across precious bandwidth, precious backbone network? Yep. Just let it go. Okay. All right, so that's what we use the stateful firewall for. Perfect. All right, and then you don't need an appliance to do something that's very simple. Right there. All right, yep. so real quickly, I'm not sure how we're doing on time, but I'm going to put up a couple of other things up here. I'm going to talk about Wi-Fi in just a few minutes. Wi-Fi is going to be something we're virtualizing in the cloud. Okay. All right, we're, we're about ready to crack the seal on that. Then you can, and I'll, I'll do this. I'm going to put down a virtual router. And it's not the same thing, but just for space. You know, WAN acceleration still has a place. Although in a properly designed IP network, we believe WAN acceleration may not their, okay. day, their days may be numbered, so to speak, if your network is really resilient enough okay. and you have enough bandwidth. But we're certainly, we got our eyes on the, on the players in that space. And we're committed in on this and we're about to crack the seal on this. The key piece here is not, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw your eyes here. Here, we pulled all the APIs, simplified it as best as we could. Make it approachable, make it usable. Here, this is third party. This isn't Comcast's product. Okay. This is maybe Fortinet. Right. Guess what? Customers know the Fortinet UI. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you into my digital experience. I'm going to bring you to my network map. I'm going to bring you to my services page. Okay. However, when the customer decides, I would like to see how my advanced firewall settings look, I will click a button and it will take me to the DX of, of Fortinet. Okay. So it's a blend depending on who they are. Which way you go. In Wi-Fi, Complete opposite. I'm pulling everything in, every right. single damn API I can, and it's going to come through here. Okay. So it's going to depend on the partnership and the kind of the the best of breed and what customers expect. God help okay. us, we will ask the customer again. Okay. So that's the idea. the The key point I wanted to offer one real quickly, and then I want to come down here is this word insights. So one of the things that we learned early on in talking to customers was customers said to us, "Would you please?" If you are building a next generation network, if you think you're really doing that, could you build me a next generation interaction and experience? Okay. You, you tell me, operators, customers, they don't have eyes on glass all the time. Right. Right? And when they get an alarm, they don't necessarily know where, where the problem is. They usually even forget where to go for this That's stuff, right. right. And then if you have hybrid WANs, hybrid networks, we have multiple carriers, they're chasing on the call, they're calling maybe AT&T, they're calling the local cable guy, and they're chasing and chasing. What if I could give you exactly what happened, whether it was okay. my network or not, and with a click of a button, I popped you to exactly the problem. All right. So, nice. And what if I could do that across all my products? Okay. Harmonized one spot. That's the idea, that's what that is, and that's what the patents were about. Wonderful. Okay. Now, real quickly, to come down here, and I'm going to make maybe two or three more points. Universal CPE, this one's a biggie. Now, 
in this world, there's, there's lots of different options out there. Um, typically, they're extraordinarily expensive. What a lot of people may not know about Comcast, so I'll, I'll broaden the scope. It was actually my old world. Um, I'm not so sure I ever want to go back to it, but I did CPE for Comcast for a long time. Okay. And I worked with the, with the team who developed and designed video set-top boxes, home security boxes, broadband boxes. Okay. Comcast builds millions and millions and millions of devices to deliver our services, right. including in business services. Okay. Down here, we took a look at what the state of the art in the industry was. Way too expensive. Okay. Way overbuilt. No scope. No scale. What we're doing is we're going to be commissioning our own. Okay. All right. And what happens down here is, and I think this is going to be a big delineator for a lot of people. These things down here, and I'm trying to think how I can elegantly show you. It's a little bit difficult, but maybe I'll do this. If I'm in a customer branch, I'm going to have an instance of my SD-WAN product, and I may have uh, an advanced firewall option that I decided that at that branch the customer wanted. So these, these components yep. running on the central um, yep. CPE device, yep. or the, and the unified I, CPE. That's Sorry. right, and I have Wi-Fi. So okay. I'm going to do this on purpose. There is a move, because SDN came out of the data center world, Correct. and you may see this with VMware, which will be interesting to see where they go with VeloCloud, where a lot of businesses say, oh, no, 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 I'm going to host all that stuff up there. I'm going to give you virtual CPE that I run in my cloud. Yeah. And I'm going to bring your unified threat management product. I'm going to run it out of the cloud, which means your traffic is going to hairpin around. Right. And you need to encrypt it, too. Yes, you do. Which then adds packet size. There you and go. All the packet size, data. delay, yeah. poor experience. What we're hearing is there's a move out of the cloud into the CPE. Edge computing. Our decision, right. our decision was... I want to make sure my products and services, again, the eye on the customer, not on what I think is cool. I want to maximize performance. Okay. As time goes by, I might kick this stuff back up with my engineers. We'll kick it up into the cloud. But okay. right now, we're running these instances locally. So what happens is I pull down the software, the, the, the VM. I spin up a VM and I run the software right here. There. there is no hairpinning. There's no nothing. This is just a control link. Okay. It's nothing but control data. All the traffic is going wherever the VPN Where it needs is set. To go. Right. You notice I didn't put Wi Fi in there. Yeah. Right? I don't need to run a VM for Wi Fi. These controllers are going to live up in my cloud. So okay. there's my, uh, my difference. I don't have to run locally because it makes no sense. All I'm going to do is deploy access points on the customer's premise. Okay. Nice and simple, nice and clean. Two other really quick points I'll offer to you. The first thing, I'm going to use green. The first thing is, these guys are precious commodities. Right? What do you mean by that? Well, the CPE comes with processors, and typically Intel is the leading player. Okay. And if people are familiar with these things at all, um, there is, well, I won't draw it, but there's chipsets called the Rangeley family, and chipsets called the Denverton family, and there's chipsets called the Xeon family. And if I translate that into English, Rangeley is old. Okay. It's about to be kind of, um, its life cycle is almost over in about two years. So then the Denverton is the new chip. It's okay. a nice chip. It's faster. It's a little bit cheaper. And then you got the Xeon, which is the big mother chip, right? And yeah. they kind of look like chips you find in computers. What it does is it gives horsepower. So to simplify it for us, it's how many cores does that processor support? Okay. Now, Xeon is slightly different, but we're not playing in that space just yet. But the boxes that you see typically come with that. Okay. And the VNF that you run on the box takes up processing power on the core. It's yep. a math equation. Yep. So for here... How many can you run? Bingo. Yep. So putting a small universal CPE, remember I don't want that one there, I want the firewall here. Putting a small CPE out there with four cores, that's about all I could do is two functions. Okay. If the customer says, well, hold on a minute, you, didn't tell, you didn't tell me about your virtual SBC, which is the other one I forgot to put up there for voice. Okay. I want an instance running down here. You're going to come you at that. Jump. How are you going to get the economies of scale? Okay. How is anybody, unlike us, going to get the economies? I'm telling you, this is an area where people aren't focused. Right. This is a big cost driver, and it's also a pain point as customers want to grow. Do they have room to grow? In our offer, we're variable. Okay. We've, That's what I was going to yeah. go. So you're in essence renting them the device, Bingo. or so 
And, and that, one of the get, things I get from my sales partners all the time is, well, yep. why don't they just buy the box? And my argument is, guess what? The network is changing so quickly. And what you really made me think more about yep. is the fact that not only is the network, but the amount of functions that we're adding is, is changing. And that's going to make you upgrade that box. Why do you want to buy it? Right. Go to Comcast, if you, let them provide if, it to you. If you, you stay right? variable and I run out of gas, it's my obligation to come and give you something one. that's bigger. Now, it might cost a couple of dollars more, but I've got the scale to build these and drop yep. the price, knock the price down, which means, I, honestly, I don't want to make money on this. Right. I want to make money on network. I want to make money on the products and services. I want my customer happy with what we delivered. Yeah. Well, because right? hardware is a commodity. Now. Exactly. We don't care about it. As Replace long it. as it, as long as it does the job. Yeah. And so this is a big deal because if you go with a hardware platform, so this is about the only negative thing I'll say, you will find that you are uh, vendor locked. Yep. I'm in one spot. Mm -hmm. Can I add all these things? Well, you go into the tyranny of the boxes, as we say. Box, 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 UI, 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 UI. Where does that get you two, three, four, five years from now? Yeah. And then maybe on my last remark, and, and I'll draw it this way. There are others, th this isn't completely foreign, mm -hmm. right? And what we see from a lot of our carrier competitors is they have different flavors of all of this. People who are closest to us kind of look like this. They don't have the orchestration layer, they don't have the VNF manager, but they've got this, yeah. right? Now Versa has a stack. really interesting stack. Yeah. Versa can support some level of advanced firewall. They have some capabilities in UTM. Frankly, it's not that much, and they really should be sticking to what SD-WAN is. You stay in this world here, and you want a Fortinet firewall, go get another box. Yeah. So they have no orchestration approach. And I, I like about this is technology changes so quickly. You know nice. what? You got somebody else who's come out with a better product right there. Precisely. Comcast is going to add to it. Now I can replace that out whenever you want. Bingo. To, so right? while, while we haven't fully contemplated it, uh, I'll, I'll pick vendor A and vendor B. Our customer chooses vendor A. We enable vendor B. We're mm -hmm. charging the customer X amount of dollars for it, 50 bucks a month. They say, hey, I really want vendor B. All that might be is a very nominal MACD change, yep. just because there's a human who might have to help. Yep. I'm going to automate the hell out of that, so maybe I can just flip it. Gotcha. Why put the burden on the customer? Because we're giving them what they want. Yeah. That's the idea. It's beautiful. All right. Love it. That's our story. There you go, guys. You've just heard geek speak with Comcast, <laughs> right? And uh, if you want to learn more about what we just talked about, go out to Cloud University, go to the Comcast section, and you'll be able to find out more.